Yeah, well, Church of SDFU. Um, I want to talk about the London riots. So I agree with people that have suggested that these riots have no um, straightforward, no real political nature as such. They don't. Um, the rioters aren't attacking specific targets, political, economic targets. They're not doing that. Um, they're not really proclaiming any uh, unified political ideology. They're not leftists or rightists. Um, they do share some things in common, and they share some things in common with some riots that have gone on in the last couple of years. They're young. Uh, they come from disadvantaged communities. Um, and that ties them in with the French rioters and it ties them in with the Redfern riots that happened in Australia uh, some years back and to me it just it's yet another kind of sign of the times the thing is modern society we've gone from once upon a time uh, people were very very caught up in their own particular ideology their own particular belief system everyone was going to heaven and in your particular religion you had that all laid out for you and then you might have been nationalist so uh, and with that often came this kind of tinge of racism where you were racially superior and you were working towards kind of a racial utopia and these are all ideas that I obviously don't like because they're ideas that are very exclusionary not founded I think in any scientific understanding of the world but they were ideas that gave people a unified purpose that connected them and that made them work as a unified whole, at least sometimes. At other times, that shared identity broke down with um, bad results for society at large, with kind of social disintegration. And I think that's what's happening again. Because we've decided that really it's all about individual interests. The only unit we need to look at is the individual. We can just plain ignore everything above that. And when it comes to the individual, uh, it's all about self-interest. We won't even think about any real greater purpose. We won't think about any real goals that that might, individual might want to have, aside from, you know, uh, owning enough cars and um, and enough women or men and being well off enough and respected enough no we'll, that's what we'll do and we'll just set aside all of those other things and the problem with that is obviously that that is a vision that can only come true for a very few people all people cannot be rich that is by definition because in in a relative system if some people are very rich then that means that a far greater amount of people are relatively quite poor and the more rich people we have that are extremely rich the more poor people we have and since we've taken away any other visions any visions that are not entirely individualistic any visions which are of a dare I say it collective nature um, there's really nothing else there for people to grab hold of. What do they grab hold of? Well, they... I think they they grab hold of each other. You know, the kind of gangs and uh, other little groups that people collect into. And in general, they get disillusioned with society. What is sometimes termed uh, and it's probably a kind of left-wing term but it's one I think makes a lot of sense they become alienated they feel like they're not really a part of society anymore and this kind of 
gets back to me, I think, to the social contract. It's where the social contract breaks down because people suddenly feel like the contract isn't doing anything, anything for them, so they're not bound by it. And I think, in fact, because a lot of these people are young, and we usually think of young people not actually entering into a social contract, and I think it's not really, obviously. It's not like someone signing a contract and going through all the legalese. But I think the kind of mental construct is there for people, or was there for people. And people that are um, born into well-to-do families that are raised by caring and attentive parents and that are put onto a path where they feel supported and feel like they will be able to um, achieve respect. I think those people will feel part of the contract and that is why they will be uh, to some extent inhibited. It's not just, you know, obviously one reason you could say why they're not going to go on the streets is because uh, they they would be worried about their future. But I think another reason would be, and this is just my conjecture, that they would actually feel that to be a wrong thing and a wrong way to act towards a society that they feel connected to in some way. And I think that connection has broken down for a lot of people. And the breakdown is getting worse. The breakdown is also getting worse, especially for people that are more rejected by uh, society than the average, like uh, people from minority communities, which uh, a lot of the writers in France were part of these minority communities in Australia. Um, the Redfern riots were basically a riot of the native Australian peoples who are a minority and in England there are also a lot of people from minorities participating and so those people feel especially alienated because in a system where they're already at the bottom where they're already not gaining any advantage from the social contract they're being additionally harassed and harangued both by the media and by law and order by the police force where in the UK by um, some studies a young black man is anywhere from 4 to 24 times more likely to be uh, questioned or searched by police in a random search than a white person. <clears throat> I mean what does that mean? Obviously there is the economic dimension. Obviously um, just on a straightforward scale you could say that rich people are probably less likely but then again we can't make everyone rich uh, that's not gonna work so I think and and that still leaves out that kind of aspect of 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 why people often bring up when you ask them about it this this these other dimensions which really I mean they they are annoying if you get pulled over a lot by police and searched they're annoying but they don't really cost you much the time they cost you isn't really a big factor that an economist would consider say so what's going on there why do people um, that uh, go on riots like this why do they talk about that kind of issue rather than some actual economic issues um, I think it's because there are these other factors which have only indirectly to do with economics and because we're only always focused on the economics, only always focused on the money, we miss that. And that's the fact that there's such a thing as human dignity, human respect, being part of society. All of these things are things that kind of come with this social contract. When you sign at the bottom, and I know you don't really sign, but yes, in a way you do accept the contract. Um, if you're happy growing up in society, you feel part of it, you're implicitly kind of accepting that contract. People that find the system failing them don't sign that contract. 
they're feeling abused they're feeling reduced to something that is uh, that is not really a proper part of society and I think that's what a lot of the problem is coming from and obviously I mean obviously you can say well you know I mean that's we can condemn any particular individual that throws a rock through a glass window or throws a Molotov cocktail but there is always a reason I mean I've heard things like oh like senseless violence and random kind of brutality it's not well you know the act itself is senseless but there's of course there's a reason behind it things don't happen for no reason if conditions were different then this would not be happening there is something wrong and obviously my analysis could be entirely incorrect maybe what we really need is more law and order we need a uh, hundred thousand more police officers to beat everyone's skull in maybe we need to send all the bad kids to the moon maybe that's the alternative I don't know I have my own as I've been laying out I have my own suspicions about what's going on but there's definitely something wrong and to me it fits together with all of the other things that have been going on for the last 30 years at least but before that we were kind of tending there but the last 30 years really pushed it in we thought that we could get to a society where we don't have to worry about ethics we don't have to worry about about empathy we don't have to worry about society we don't have to worry about uh, about uh, human connection we can just focus on the economics and because the market takes care of everything it'll all turn out fine and that did not happen it can work temporarily um, but eventually especially as this whole process accelerated and as people wound up in situations where they're no longer struggling for their mere existence they can survive so they've kind of graduated from the most dire uh, challenge in their life to a new challenge level and now they're trying to accomplish something um, with their basic sustenance guaranteed and we provide them nothing then it's not gonna work and we need to we need to work on this I'm an atheist I personally don't want to leave this all up to religion because I think religion is uh, a force that will naturally fade over time that is my personal opinion but even if that isn't the case we still need to provide an alternative from our side um, because well otherwise what good are we um, we need to come up with some new movements some new ideas to give people hope and those ideas can't be ideas of, of, of markets and efficiency because those ideas may inspire economists uh, to come up with a new mathematical model for how the world can be perfect um, given enough time and uh, calculation but they don't inspire people and we need to we, I mean these are like these are the same words that every politician spits out during an election campaign we need to hope against hope we need to uh, you know keep hope alive and create a new future and blah 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 but the reason why people fall for Obama and people like him is because that's what they want that's what they need that's not what they get because the people they elect are the same people that were in charge before they were just saying that they didn't mean any of it they didn't have any of that 
of that inspirational stuff that people are craving. They were just spouting empty rhetoric. So we need to start providing that in whatever form possible. If we don't, then I don't think things are going to go well, to be quite honest. I think as I, people are going to be less happy. So people that are in middle and upper class, um, they're going to get more depressed, they're going to get more anxious, they're going to get less sleep, and they're going to actually live less happy lives. People down there, they're going to be completely lost. They're not going to know what to do. They're going to be um, children of parents that have probably already given up. And a lot of them, for that reason, won't even consider becoming, signing that social contract and becoming uh, productive members of society. They will understand how the deck was stacked against them. And they will, they will know they have two options. Either play along in the system and be the sucker, or quit and be the rebel. Rebel without a cause that burns down a city but at least you have your dignity and people are going to choose their dignity because it's worth more to people than money. Church of SDFU.